Hello everyone, we are watching some spooky TikToks, and I don't know what else to say about that. So, if you like spooky stuff, if you like TikTok, or for some reason if you like me, then stick around. I don't know why I said that so aggressively. Um, just watch this video and hang out with me. Or with TikTok. Or the spookiness. I don't know. So anyway, let's get to these TikToks and we'll see how spooky they are. This is Norman. Norman was created approximately 18 years ago to see him in a music video for the band Interpol. However, people cherished him, but unfortunately, Norman went missing for 10 years. In 2014, That's a public sale became listed creepy. on iCollector.com under the title Animatronic Creepy Ghoul Puppet from Music Video. After 10 years, Norman had reappeared, and he appeared very badly. Having a devoted fan base, nobody bought him, and he went missing once more for another five years. Until YouTube managed to locate him and purchase him this is Norman we need to talk about this photo this was sent to me by one of my followers Laura and when I read this true story about what happened to her my jaw was on the floor I've never read a story that actually happened to someone that was this terrifying so let's get into the story this photo was taken when I was one I had a nanny back in Indonesia and she acted very strange everyone felt uneasy around her and felt chills whenever she was around her eyes were cold and she was awkward but at first we didn't think much of it she was only around for a couple weeks because the next thing that happened blew my mind one day my mom came home and found our door unlocked the lights off and the sound of someone's voice chanting and on top of that, I was screaming and crying. <clears throat> so my mom got our neighbor and together they barged in the door, only to find me latched onto my nanny and no one could pull me off. They had to perform some kind of exorcism in order to get my arms off of her. And then she started mumbling under her breath saying, this is impossible, usually they be by now. Later, we found out there was a group of people in a satanic cult that went around nearby towns pretending to be nannies so they can perform sacrifices to the devil and pretend it's an accident. In return, they were promised fame and money. And based on the words this lady mumbled after the ritual, it's clear that this isn't the first time she's performed this sacrifice. I only found this out months ago, but every time I see this photo, I feel chills down my spine. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Laura, for letting me share this story, and I'm so glad you're okay now. If you have a scary, strange, or just plain crazy story that happened to you or someone you know, send it to me because I would love to read your story. And follow for more. We need This is why you should never search your own name on findagrave.com. One day, a girl was at school just messing around on the school's computer homepage, procrastinating about some assignment that she had to complete. On the side of the page, it showed multiple website links. Usually, they were for the different classes that she took, but one stuck out to her because she'd never seen it before. It was called www.finagrave.com. Been to that site. Of her, so she decided to click the link, ignoring the uneasy feeling telling her otherwise. The website was rather simple. It was mostly a white page with text in the center saying, search 87 million grave records. The girl started typing in dead relatives' names of hers. The search would display all of their details and a photo. The photo wasn't of them, but rather their grave. Someone had taken the time to go around to the gravesite and take photos of them. And this was the exact same for every relative that she searched. That night when she got home, she still felt uneasy. So she told her mother about this strange website she came across and asked her who took the photos of her relative's tombstones. Her mother had no idea and just laughed it off as a strange occurrence. The girl was still so curious about the website, so she decided to investigate it a little bit further, typing in names of famous dead people like Kurt Cobain, and sure enough, all of their tombstones would also appear. She searched the website late into normal. the night and started typing names of random alive celebrities. Then she decided to type in names of alive people that she knew, and finally she decided to search her own name. All searches appeared, she was intrigued to know where they were from and when they died. The other four people with the exact same name as hers were in states surrounding her own. 
She started to have a bad feeling again, and just as she was about to exit the page, she now notices that the website says showing four or five results. Confused because she thought that she'd seen them all, she decides to go to the new entry. It read her name, her birth year, and the date she died was the next day. The photo wasn't of a tombstone though. It was a picture of her staring at a computer screen with a dark figure standing behind her. The time Ooh, was 11.59, just before midnight. This is why Real story of Kyoko, the grudge. I've seen that one. One day, her husband was snooping around in their bedroom and found her diary. When he read it, he became convinced that she was cheating on him. When she came back home from work and went upstairs, he was waiting for her, holding a knife. He attacked her, beating her and slashing her viciously right in front of their young son. Kayako tried to flee, but her husband chased her. He was almost out of his mind with rage. Covered in blood, she slipped and fell, breaking her ankle. Desperate to escape, she crawled down the stairs. But when she reached the front door, her husband grabbed her, took her head in both of his hands, and twisted it around breaking her neck. Kayako was still alive, but she was paralyzed. The only sound she could make was a hoarse death rattle. Her husband dragged her upstairs, put her in a black plastic bag, and left her in the attic to die. Then he got their son and drowned him in the bathtub and stuffed his body in a closet. Because she died in such pain and anguish and rage, Kayako came back as a vengeful ghost. She appeared to her husband and strangled him with her hair. Real story of Kyoko, the grudge. I don't like believing in the paranormal, but I swear Mexico is haunted. Okay, so this chick claims that she went to her, gra not her grandma's house, her aunt's house, and she carved an L on the tree because the rest of her cousins would do it. And she says she fucked up and she kept on doing like a bigger one and a bigger one till it got like this fucking big, right? And then she says that the next morning she woke up with an L shaped bruise on her leg. And so remember what I told y'all about my last story about Lucifer and how he signed with an L? I'm just saying, and her name is Lily. I'm just saying. And so here's like another angle right here where you can obviously tell that it's an L shape. And so I started thinking about this and I came to the conclusion that whatever entity is there at that house wants you to know that it's there. It wants to know, like, like it wants to be aware of it. Like it wants you to know of it. You know, it wants you to be aware of its presence because that's like the same thing that she did with the tree, right? She said, okay, um, I came to this house and all my cousins put their initials, you know? And why would you put your initial on the tree? Because you want everybody to know, you know, you want your presence to be made, that you're there, that you are that entity, that you are there. So vice versa, that's, that's what I got out of it. I'm just saying. I don't like this Raggedy Ann looking weirdo right here is actually the real Annabelle doll. Though the 2014 film Annabelle depicts the doll having a porcelain face with an unsettling smile etched onto it, the real life doll who inspired the movie is seemingly normal looking. The real story of Annabelle takes place in 1970, when a young nurse named Donna had received the doll as a gift from her mother. Donna proudly displayed Annabelle in her apartment, which she shared with her friend Angie. At first, everything seemed normal. That is until the two women noticed that Annabelle was moving around the apartment on its own accord. Soon after, Donna and Angie would find sinister notes laying around the apartment, one of which had Help Me written on it. I guess it could have just been a prank by either of them, but that doesn't explain how one strange occurrence left Angie's boyfriend, Lou, 
physically harmed. Lou was in the apartment and he heard a rustling sound in the distance that sounded like someone was trying to break Why in. Upon further investigation, Lou found no traces of force entry, but he did see that Annabelle was lying face down on the floor. According to Lou, he felt a searing pain on his <laughs> chest, and when he looked down, there were deep, bloody claw marks across his chest. The scratches were so deep, there was no doubt it's they would leave permanent scarring. However, right just two now. days after the incident, the marks completely vanished from Lou's chest. <laughs> Any attempts to rid their home of the evil board. doll, Donna and Angie reached out to Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens were famed paranormal investigators during that time, and they investigated this evil Annabelle doll. They believed that a demonic force had attached itself to the doll and was in search of a human host. Ed and Lorraine Warren ordered an exorcism of Donna and Angie's apartment to try and cleanse their home of this spirit. Soon after, the Warrens took Annabelle and placed her in their occult museum. To this day, the doll still resides in this museum placed in a special wooden box inscribed with the Lord's Prayer and St. Michael's Prayer. But whatever you do, positively do not open that damn box. Welcome to part two of Haunted Auntie Colette stories. Turn on the fucking light. If you haven't seen part one, none of this is gonna make sense. You know what to do. Again, guys, disclaimer, if you're watching this at midnight, 3, 3.30, 3.33 in the morning, shut it down. Watch it in the safety of the day. So as I sat up in my bed while Mike screamed, in, on the open light. in his sleep, I did nothing. You guys, when I say the guilt of this, it consumed me. I felt like the worst wife in the world. I did nothing. So in Mike's dream, he had some sort of a thing crawl into bed next to him and he assumed it was me. He went to spoon it as that's how we sleep and it only took him seconds to realize it was not me. He said it felt like a damn skeleton. When he looked down, he saw the most disgustingly horrific creature laying there, just far enough out of reach for him to be safe, but it was coming for him. And I hate this look that I have to make, but this is what it was doing. <laughs> he said it had black saliva and was just ferocious. He was screaming at me, turn on the fucking light. But in his dream, all he could get out was, on the fucking light. And like I explained, I shot up out of bed, but I did nothing. I just sat there. I just looked at him. I didn't try to wake him. I didn't do anything. I was a medical assistant at that time for a surgeon. I thought he was having a stroke and I did nothing. Anyways, because I didn't do anything after he screamed multiple times, he decided the only way to get rid of this thing or save himself was to turn on the light himself. He had to physically reach over this creature that was trying to attack him to turn on our lamp. But the second he turned on the light, he said that creature just screamed and slithered under our bed. And he said instantly he heard something under the bed that sounded Ew. like a very large dog attack this creature and ripping it to shreds. He could hear it screaming and writhing in pain and the dog growling and tearing it apart. This dream really Rowdy. shook Mike and it really upset me. It put a lot of massive guilt on me for not doing a thing for my husband. I have a very tight-knit circle of <clears> friends <throat> who are exactly like me. Psychics, gifted. And we check in on one another in situations where we think one of the other person's being attacked by a D-word. I got four phone calls that morning from that circle of friends saying, Colette, you are under a D-word attack. One of my more gifted friends called and said, holy shit, sis, this is bad. She said, Mike had a dream last night, didn't he? And we don't tell each other anything. We let each other go with no details to figure it out. I said, yeah, he did. She described the dream, the creature, and even my guilt. I started crying. I said, sis, I'm the worst wife in the world. I did nothing. Now remember in part one when I said I've never been able to figure out my spirit animal? Well, I found out that day. Now remember, I haven't told my friend a detail at all about my husband's dream. She said, sis, you feel guilty. You feel like you did nothing for your husband. She said, when in fact, you did everything. Confused, I asked her, sis, what do you mean? She said, the reason you didn't move on the bed was you weren't there and you saved your husband. That creature that was under the bed, the dog, that wolf, it was you. You were what shredded that D word under the bed. And in that moment, it all made sense. There's more to this the story D. I will be sharing, and it will all tie together and make sense. Welcome to part two of Haunted Auntie Colette's story. You guys know the drill when you see this background. I'm only telling you once. Today's story is on the gory side, so viewer discretion is advised. It's story time. Viewer Take a seat. Discretion I can't advised. believe Nemo just touched that butt. <laughs> on August 17th, 2003, <laughs> there was a man by the name of Doug McKay who was the co-owner of this carnival in Seattle, Washington. On this day, Doug would be oiling up a section of the carnival's most famous ride. It went by the name of the Super Loop 2. Doug would be Super scanning the area loop. of this roller coaster, looking at it, trying to figure out which parts to oil while it was still active and full of passengers. Uh -oh. As the ride began going through its famous loop, Doug McKay was standing right underneath it. Uh -oh. Unfortunately for Doug, his hair would be blowing straight up from the wind, and it would cause it to get caught by the wheels on this roller coaster. Uh -oh. 
Uh, After his hair was caught, the momentum of the roller coaster was just so great that it swooped him off his feet and just started carrying him oh, along with the other no. passengers. After a short while of being ragged all through the air by this ride, there'd Owie. be a piece of metal work that was sticking out, and it would go across his throat, cutting it. Ouch. The cut wouldn't be enough to kill him, but it would be enough to spray blood all over this little boy by the name of Dylan Bowles, who was Ew. directly in front of them when this happened. He would be the only one out of 30 people on that ride who got sprayed by Doug's blood. Damn. But the worst was yet to come. While Doug was still barely alive, the ride would loop the loop again, and this loop was so great that it uh. tore his scalp clean off his head. The separation of his scalp would free him from the roller coaster, but with his throat cut and his head scalped, it sent blood spraying everywhere. Wait for uh. it. Directly on a class of children who were standing in line for another ride. After these poor kids Gross. had been sprayed with blood, Doug would continue his journey through the air and crash into this beam that folded him in half like a lawn chair. I he would can't finally catch die a break. after hitting the concrete that was below him, but the impact was so great that it caused his guts, brains, you name it, to splatter everywhere. And remember, kids were here. Oh, and the icing on the cake, the splatter from that would get all over another bunch of kids who were just unfortunate to be walking by at the time. Gross. After this mayhem finally came to an end, the police and the fire department would come by really fast and try to cover up everything, but it'd be too late for the people that already saw it. The Super Loop 2 would be closed for the remainder of the summer and be used as a sort of memorial for Doug. Like and comment for more Traumatizing. Stories. You guys know the drill when- Oh my gosh, have you heard this story? This is the creepy and true story a night at grandma's. A few years back, a guy went to stay at his grandma's house while she went out of town for the weekend with some friends. He was gonna stay there and watch over the place while she was gone. He settled in for that first night and tucked himself into the guest bedroom. He laid there a while, texting and on his phone, when he began to faintly hear a woman's voice coming from outside. Hello? And then again, hello? Every 10 seconds, he could hear this woman. He walked downstairs, and as he got closer to the front door, he realized that's where the voice was coming from. It was midnight. Who would be at his grandma's door? The person wasn't knocking or ringing the bell. He didn't want to open the door, so he leaned to look through the curtain in the dining room that had a direct view of the front porch. He gently and slowly pulled it back so he could peek outside, and was startled to see a 50-something-year-old woman standing on the front porch, staring at him, like she knew he would be looking from there. There was something very weird old about lady. The woman. She just stood there, smiling. The guy slowly backed away from the window as the woman continued, Hello. He rushed back upstairs, locked himself in the guest room, and eventually it went quiet. Whoever she was must have left. Two hours later, he was almost asleep when he heard someone tapping on that front window. He ran back downstairs to see the shadow of that same woman now directly in front of the window. He realized she had never left and had been out there for hours. He screamed at her, get out of here. He ran back upstairs and hoped she would leave. Thankfully, morning eventually came and he called his grandma to tell her about what had happened the night before. As soon as he told her, his grandma began frantically yelling, no, she came to the house. His grandma went on to tell him that the week before, she noticed a woman was following her around the grocery store. The woman had that same uneasy smile. Creepy. But they both believed that this was the same woman. What she had planned for that night, they had no idea. <laughs> I mean, what was that woman planning to do? Sometimes I ask questions I'm not sure I want the answers to. Oh my gosh, have you heard this? Have you ever seen a doll that can walk by itself? This is Rosita, the walking doll, and her owner, Rosa. Rosa has claimed to have the doll for about 50 years. Neighbors have claimed when they would peek through the windows of Rosa's house, they would see the doll moving by itself. As you can see, Rosita won't just walk with anybody. This video was taken a couple years later, and Rosa claimed that this is Rosita, the same doll. She looks a lot different. Could she have gotten older? Have you ever seen a doll that can walk by itself? This That's is the weird. disappearance of Barbie Roberts. Viewer discretion is advised. On the <laughs> evening of March 3rd, 1994, Barbie Millicent Roberts was in her dream home when an altercation ensued with then-boyfriend Ken Parsons. Later that night, she would never be seen again. Best friend Midge, who was staying with Barbie at the time of her disappearance, Midge. relayed to investigators that Ken had told Barbie to quote, come on and let's go party. Barbie allegedly replied with, ah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Police found Barbie's magical camper two weeks later, which resulted in a warrant to search Ken's vehicle. What they found in it might shock you. A shovel. 
some oh, rope no. in Barbie's bright blue pumps. Oh, so without man. probable cause or a body, police were never able to arrest Ken for Barbie's disappearance. So what do you think happened to this blonde bombshell? And what secrets is she hiding? Did Ken have something to do with it? And did he use his earring magic to make her disappear? To live a more authentic life to who he is on the inside? Has anyone checked the Goodwill? Are the clues of her disappearance sold separately? Or was it something else? This uh, is the disappearance of Barbie Ken. Roberts. Why does this keep showing up? Who do you think killed? Halloween movies based on true stories, part one. Did you know Jeepers Creepers was based on a true story in real life? He is a demon similar to a snake and he wakes up every 23 years by hunting humans by their smell. A married couple used to live in Michigan in 1990. Dennis DePew was an ordinary man who loved his kind wife. But she wasn't happy, and after asking for a divorce, Dennis lost his mind. He took the life of his beloved wife as an act of revenge, and then proceeded to dump her body behind an abandoned schoolhouse. In the film, the demon can be seen throwing bodies of victims behind an abandoned church. There is also a creepy scene in the movie which two brothers observe what the mysterious creature was doing. In real life, the two brothers were actually on a road traveling, and they noticed Dennis throwing his wife's body. Follow for the next Halloween movie. Halloween movies based on true stories, part one. But it was his brother and his sister. I mean, it was a brother and a sister. It was Derry and Patricia, I think her name was. It's been a minute since I watched that movie. So, thank you guys so much for watching this spooky TikTok with me. I really appreciate it. Um, if you like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know if you want more of these videos. Let me know in the comments below. And I will catch you on the flip side. See you in the next one.